All right, boys. We've got, we finished the D-pad. We're gonna go ahead and attack the uh, select and start button. Just one of each, uh, one, and then one of the A and B buttons. So show how it is I would go about doing that before we get into trying to model the whole controller together, um, which shouldn't be too big of a jump from having taken care of the actual hard parts of it. Um, so let's create a cube. Create a cube. Uh, let's drag it over to be where I don't know where, where we're gonna work. We're gonna work on this button here, and uh, let's hit R and scale it out to be about the right size of the button. I like to kind of make it a little bit bigger, like that. Uh, a little bit closer. Yeah, sure, something like that. Uh, oh, but this, I'm sorry, this cube is going to have the button on it. It's not going to be the si same size as it. I'm sorry. So we want it to be bigger. About like that. Cool. And so first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with edge loops to block out the edges of the button. Okay. So that's the edge of a button. Excuse me. The edge of a button, the edge of a button, and the edge of a button. And there are a couple other. I mean, as you can see, you can to define this button. It kind of it might take a little bit more detail. And so that's what we're going to do is we're going to add two more vertexes in here, and I'll show you why. So then we're going to go to vertex mode. Before we do any extrusions, I'm going to hit Q, and I'm going to kind of nudge this vertex over here. Okay. Just like that. And I want this one to be in the same line as that one. Now, this looks very polygonal right now, but with our smoothing tools and whatnot, we'll be able to make this look much much better um, with, a, with some bevels, okay? So uh, just follow along, and I'll show you, show you how this is going to work. Um, so minimal amount of resolution, pretty good. I like that. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, kind of go in while we're at it. Put these over. Clean up your... Uh, geometry as you go to save you some work later. Okay. Uh, take these edges here. Uh, I'm going to single click that. I'm going to hit R and I'm going to pull down on this towards the center but not hit the center. And what that does is it flattens that line out. And that's what I want to do. I want to flatten it out. So you pull down to the center but you don't hit the center with your R scale tool. Um, Cool, and then now I can select these faces, and I can start working just like as if I was working on that D-pad. So I'm gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna hit, uh, what is it, uh, extrude W. Um, but first, I'm gonna inset it a little bit by hitting R and holding Control and pulling it in. I'm gonna offset it slightly to give me the first edge loop. Hit extrude again, pull her down to give me the next little guy, and pull her all the way in. A little bit further to give that little edge loop there. Good stuff. See you, Daniel. And then hold R. Pull that in. Boom. Back up. And I'm leaving all those supporting edge loops like I do as I go. Okay. Great. Great work. Okay. Cool. And look how it kind of mashed to be the su see what I mean about the subdivision surfaces. Okay. So then we need to do what we did on the last one, which was in um, in edge mode. We need to select all these edges that we want to remain crisp. Now, which edges do we want to remain crisp? This is different than the other one. We actually don't want these edges here to remain crisp because by allowing them to subdivide and pull in, we're getting the round surface. But what we do want to be beveled is what? Is the outside of the button here, um, which is interesting that the only bevels we needed were bevels basically on the depth here on this button because the way subdivision uh, surfaces work really benefited us um, but if we want to make the other cube look like the, uh, this cube look like a good prototype cube then we need to select the outer the outer edges and and run the bevel operation on them okay Just like that. Oops. Not sure what happened there. I'll go ahead and run it again.
absolutely fantastic. Um, now, uh, let's see what happens when we when we basically when we use the crease tool with this with this um, with this object. See what that did is it actually brought it back to being kind of polygonal on these edges, which isn't what we wanted necessarily. Uh, so we undo, undo. Um, we are missing a bevel here, as I can see right now, right there. Little bugger. There we go. Oops. Let's run back before we ran our operate bevel operation. Click that one as well. There we go. Okay. So all we really want to do then is we want to crease certain edges and not others. So let's figure out which edges it is that we want to crease. Cool. Oh, cool. That's not bad. That's not bad. I like creasing these here. It doesn't really do anything for me. So if it doesn't do anything for me and if it's not hurting me, there's no point in actually creasing those edges. And so that's what the point there is. So like it actually hurts you to crease these edges. Well, that's not so bad right there. Um, but it, it doesn't benefit me at all to crease them, whereas it benefited me in the other one to crease them absolutely. So that's where we are there. That's a finished version of that button. Okay, so let's move it out of the way. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work on the last red button here, and uh, and uh, then we'll talk about synthesizing it and m putting it all together and trying to make a, the actual game controller. Okay.